So I'm going to talk to you about the lambda calculus as implemented in C++ lambdas. This is a modest evolution for C++. By a show of hands, how many people know what the lambda calculus is? Okay. How many people know what Turing machines are? Okay, a lot more. Now, these are the foundations of computing, but they are actually theoretically and conceptually equivalent in power. Now, Turing machines are defined as an infinite tape proceeding in both directions. You have a tape head that can track forward, can track backward, can read directly what's under it, can write directly what's under it. And I know what I thought as soon as I heard that. Tape? What is this, 1860? This is so old-fashioned. We need to build our fundamental computing systems on something a little bit more modern. Let's talk about C++. Uh, so we've been talking about C++ a lot here. You know, there's C++ and then new standards came out, and oh, now there's modern C++, even cooler. And now we've moved on beyond that. Now we're at postmodern C++. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know about this. this. This feels a little much to me. I, it's so much like, you know, we, we just had Bjarne Sturstrup on stage saying that he doesn't know all of C++. I think it's gotten pretty big. We need to go back to modern C++. But even modern C++ is too much for me. I think we need to just take just, just a little bit out, just, just shave off a little something. Like, you'll hardly even notice that it's gone. Um, you know, just take a little bit out. So, you know, we go from modern C++ and just, just subtract something. You won't even notice it's gone. Um, so we go from something that's old and busted, big and complicated, and now we get modem C++, which is new and shiny. So the basis of lambda calculus is the function. Everything is defined in terms of the function call, function application, function composition. You just define functions, and when you want to use it, you write a new function. This is something we're all familiar with. You don't have to learn, like, some new tape head concept that's all confusing and crazy. No. You just have a function. So these are the building blocks that we're going to use to build up the lambda calculus in C++. We're going to use the token auto, main, int, argc, char, argv, and return. And then what goes next? Obviously zero, right? No. Wrong. We're going to use these symbols. And with the power of these symbols, we will build our own zero. No more integer literals. Down with the tyranny of literals. Turns out zero is not even a decimal literal. It's an octal literal. It's been hiding the whole time. We can't trust it. No. This is modem C++. This is C++ I can get behind. So now we've defined zero. What do we do next? One? Ha, surely you jest. Then we have to define two, three, four. I don't have time for that. There are a lot of numbers out there. Instead, what we need to do is define the successor function. This is what, how the lambda calculus is built up. You have an expression. This is the, uh, you, you know, you substitute it in to expert. So when you want to define one, you just do this, nice and straightforward. You don't have to learn anything new. Everything you already know about function application is defined right here. You want two, bam, successor function on one. We're good to go. Now, you may have heard of something called dependent typing. And this makes use of a lot of dependent typing because it depends on you typing a lot. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I wrote a program in the Lambda calculus in C++, implemented entirely in C++ Lambdas. I'm going to open up this God bolt. Oops, don't read that yet. Here's a God bolt showing just how nice this is. <laughs> and uh, we see here that, uh, yeah, I can run it, and it works. And it's actually not doing the right thing. Uh-oh. OK, I had this working just a second ago, and it would square the number that I put in, parse the string, everything would be good. Uh, so the good news is it's so simple, I can debug it. I will actually debug it in real time in the next minute I have. Paid no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> I can fix it, because it, there's only one thing. There can't be very many places it went wrong. Let's go here. Here we go. Oh, yeah, this is the stuff. Compiling. Takes a while to compile. Yes, I don't want you to see what I'm doing. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm running out of time. Almost there. Here we go. OK. Now we're cooking with Crisco. OK. I take this. I fix it. I wait for it to compile to make sure. 
And here we go. It is fixed. And we see that negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 7 squared is 49. And negative 12 squared is 144. Oh. <laughs> Thereby bringing me to my last slide. Look on my work, see mighty in despair.